fix up a couple more Amiga PSUs for myself because I have such a shortage of them. <laughs> So I was um, browsing around on AliExpress and I got myself a couple of these Meanwell power supplies. Now these are Meanwell's RT65B, 65 is in 65 watt or 65 to 70 watt, this kind of a region. And uh, the B is the type which has a plus 5 volts and plus 12 volts, which is perfect for what we need, <laughs> you know, for the Amiga. I think this should be, you know, more than enough. Now I've decided to put this inside an Amiga 500 uh, power supply case since you know that's the only one I have. But the second one is gonna go inside this enclosure, which I decided to get especially for this. And uh, yeah, I just I went for this enclosure because it kind of there is you know something quite 80s about it. It reminds me of the um, I mean if you remember the old Commodore 64 wedge power supplies, <laughs> this one here. It reminds me of this. I mean. I like this power supply. I mean, I don't like the the way it works. It's the one which you know is most likely to ruin your Commodore 64 by because it's like packed with epoxy resin completely. <laughs> but I just there's something funky about the design of this thing, and uh, the wedge thing, the wedge lock is so 80s. You know, a lot of 80s things around the house are uh, really wedge style, and I kind of I think it's quite funky. <laughs> Now this is all the equipment here, which um, I, will I will need, uh, and this obviously the power supply itself. And you probably be wondering why there are three cord grips here, and uh, that is because one is going to be the mains, one is going to be this thing, and I found this thing in the attic, and the other one is going to be an extra cable which you know, is going to power external things. As you can see here, I've already marked out you know exactly where the holes are going to be drilled. Uh, there's three at the back, and there's like, one at the front here for the switch. One thing which actually annoyed me about the Amiga power supplies is that freaking wire at the front which kind of goes there and you have to fold it all the way back which is why I've got you know all the wires coming out the back you know so it's like much easier as you can see I've done a lot of research measured it and um, you know everything seems to be a perfect fit perfect just fits inside just like this snug and as you can see here, it's got enough space inside to like, you know, dance around. Uh, but uh, you can see here that it's got enough ventilation underneath and, you know, at the top as well. So that's just, you know, I'm not worrying about that whatsoever. Now, the first thing which I wish to do is uh, actually drill the holes. Uh, so there's, you know, there's uh, three, four, four holes I need to drill. Yeah, I will be spray painting this a certain color. <laughs> which of course is gonna match my Amiga, my Amiga 1200 and uh, that disk drive as well so it's gonna be like part of the set and the CD-ROM drive of course <laughs> so it's time to get the Mickey though <laughs> and to drill the holes I'm gonna use this really nice uh, stepper drill which comes in really handy actually because it's just it's perfect it's just like stop at whatever size hole you want and it just, it just makes things quicker. And of course you cannot do it with anything, you know, that's deep, only like things like these plastic boxes, which I use mostly, so it's perfect for me. Don't want it with too big. Fantastic. Perfect fit. Amazing. Happy with that, really happy with that. So now for these uh, cord grips, cord grip holes, it's going to be number 10 for each of them. <sighs> yeah, number 10 for sure. It's got a little tail now. You can just, you can waggle it now. You can just say, hey, I'm a happy little PSU. <laughs> so yeah, that's a perfect fit. <laughs> Okay, that's that done now. I've done that in the front, the switch, and the three for the three cables coming out at the back. So let's, we don't need this anymore, so let's kind of like put this away. Yeah, let's start um, sanding the surface of this down. Actually, let's open it and take this back out again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we need to sand the surface of this simply because um, every single plastic has a coating, and that uh, kind of stops 
you know any paint or anything like this from clinging onto it so you just need to remove that coating you need to understand it so much just like just enough to remove the top coating of it and then it's fine okay so what you need is i mean like a brand new rough scouring bed and you don't even need emery paper i think emery paper would probably screw this up unless it's really fine but just to kind of yeah just to roughen up the surface a bit get rid of that coating on the surface yeah okay so that's the entire thing and it's entirely completely you yeah, can feel bits like grittiness because <laughs> that's the coating come off so now what you can do is apply the the paint primer onto this and then um, after that the paint and then top coat it's not actually that much different from doing your nails <laughs> really it's just like you have the undercoat the base coat uh, or the primer if you want to call it that then you have the paint itself or however many layers of that and then you have a top coat so it's just really exactly the same process for those of you who do your nails of course <laughs> so what i'm going to actually do before i before i prime this is give it a good wash like wash it with um, you know liquid and stuff and dry it properly and then i'll prime it so let's go downstairs where i will start doing this stuff okay so i'm here in, in the utility laundry or whatever the freak you call it i don't know what you call this room here and of course here you're gonna hear all the homely sounds happening <laughs> like doors creaking open closed and the um the boiler and everything so <clears throat> anyway what i need to do this to do first is prime this thing with this uh, plastic primer where's it going this thing this plastic primer here that's the the base coat thing the primer and then it's color which is this which i used on the, on the 400 uh, I actually like the um, thingy of this, <laughs> the um, kind of this, it's really nice and colourful, very homely looking. Um, anyway, so I'm admiring the, the can logos and stuff, <laughs> but uh, yeah, what I need to do first, primer. What I'll do is I'll use this as a base coat. I mean, I, I ordered this first. I mean, it's all right. It's, you know, a good color, but this is more close to the color that I want, this motif one. And uh, so what I'll do is rather than this just like lying there going to waste, I'll use this as a base coat or undercoat or something like this, and then, you know, I have put this on top of it rather than just like, you know, wasting this by using it twice or something like that. Parts of it are patchy, but it's wet, I mean, but more or less it's dried up. Just give it another minute and it should be fine. It's still actually a very nice color. It's like a new color too. I really like that. I'm not like an expert in spray paints or anything, but so far, from all that I've tried, I like these two um, companies the best. Motif, well, motif I, I like it the most. I love um, metallic colors of you know of all types to be honest. Metallic red, metallic metallic blue and red. I love this, my favorites. But also metallic green and the others. Just there's something about metallic colors. I just got I'm just drawn to them. Now after this dries, what I'm gonna do is just like one more of this what it's like you know if it's just right then that should be fine then, then i'll let it dry properly and then we'll do like a top coat on this just to like seal everything in and give it a nice shiny finish at the end okay so just been away for half an hour um just had uh, made and had dinner and it's all seemed to be dry yeah so it's actually quite nice this color itself this rust oleum one um it is actually nice though it's just I I like a particular shade of blue and this one this motif one is much closer to the blue I think. But yeah, this is ready for a coat of this now. And after a coat of that I'm gonna have to leave it for like two hours and then after two hours then you know spray it uh, with this the clear lacquer uh, as a you new know, top coat. 
So it's gonna This I noticed it takes longer to dry this rust -Oleum. You have to leave it for like about half an hour 20 minutes before coats and half an hour it's fully dry. This just dries in like it should have five to ten minutes this month. This dries. The full on hardening before actually um, you know using the um, cup coat in two hours, which is understandable. <laughs> I decided to do the um, the CD-ROM drive, the uh, the internal one, to make it kind of give it more of an external appearance, <laughs> you know, because I don't like that. I hate that internal CD drive on the desktop. I just hate it. So I just want to kind of give it a bit of a a nice looking thing rather than that stupid freaking gray. Okay, so anyway, enough about that. Um, these, our friends here, these have been, you know, this is um, done now. It's dried and everything is fine. So all this needs now is just like a top coat, a coat of uh, clear lacquer, and it'll be fine, you know, it'll be done. It'll actually make the metallic feel pop out a bit more, uh, which is, you know, I love this. So anyway, let's start that. So that is now done and it's got a nice layer on top of it. Now we'll leave this to dry overnight. So once that's done, then tomorrow I can just continue with the you know the inside of the circuit. Okay. So for now I will say buenas noches. <laughs> and I will leave it at that for today. And next time I will be continuing with the innards of this PSU and wiring it up. Also, if you haven't seen the video series where I spray paint my Amiga 1200, do check that out. The link is in the description below. Now, before I wrap this up, I would like to give a much deserved shout out to a good friend of mine, Robert Menes. He and his friend Edgar Velasco are the Nostalgia Road Trip. Now, if you're like myself and feel nostalgia for everything from the olden days, whether it be your childhood cartoons or even music or vintage computers, whatever it may be, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, then their website is a must to check out. They have a podcast, articles, and all sorts. They are also active in their Facebook group, and the links and details are in the description below. Thanks for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos and to subscribe for more. Also, don't forget to hit that bell icon. For now, I will say adios. For the generous donations, I would like to say a big thank you to my lovely patrons. In alphabetical order, Al Hunt, Albert Hartman, Alex, Andrew, Anthony Proctor, Austin Pryor, Axel Dominator, Boris Matishin, Brad Hansen, Cameron Armstrong, Kari Esterna, Gustin Lervad, Casual Commodore, Calder Fusion, Ka Counting Virtual Sheep, Dave Rowland, Durgoik, Duncan Bullock, Egon Olsen, Electronscape UK, Eric Andre, Espen Galbeck, Frat M, Gav Messingham, Jeff Major, Glenn Murek, Hayes Maker, James Burr, James Hare, Jan Bete, Jason Kadever, Jeffrey T. Burr, Jim Leonard, Just Eddy, Yuka Ishatala, Matt Troest, Maria Engström, Marco Morin, Mark McDonald, Matt Shepkar, Matthew Simpson, Matty Immonen, Mindflare Retro, Mickey Holm, Mix Ray, Obraxis, Patrick Ekman, Paul Delta, Pell Maskelin, Peter Langback, Playa Valley, Rancy, Restless.com, Ruben Barnett, Risky Flyer, Robert Menes, Rob Utley, Rofi Otterstein, Roy Gelotti, Rudiger Stiedel, Sugutur Finson, Sophie Leroy, Steve Jones, Stuart Evans, the Deeply Cynical, Thomas Prisina, Thomas Muller, Dina Stomkoller, and Wayne Marsh. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below, as well as the links to my Patreon's websites or YouTube channels.